Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's November the 23rd and it's the fourth chapter of Peter's first letter. So he begins in verse 1 saying that for as much as Christ has suffered in the flesh, you also, you of the twelve tribes of Israel, should arm yourselves in the same way with the same attitude, the same mind because he that has suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin suffering for the Jew is the discipline of God that causes him to put away sin it brings about the fear of God and the fear of God causes a man to hesitate in his sin before the Lord that he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men but to the will of God. So God enables the believers here. They are, they are Jews, but they're believers in God. And we would, we would recognize them as God-fearing Jews. We could also recognize them as Christians of a sort, although not all of the people that he's speaking to would be Christians. But um, he says, for the time past of our life, may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, in lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not after them to the same excess of riot, and they speak evil of you, who will give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. <clears throat> what he's saying is that there was a time when you lived like the Gentiles lived Now we can see now that he's speaking to Jews who have responded to God and their lives have been changed the fear of God has come upon them and they've put away lasciviousness and lust and excessive wine and so on and they've begun to live a life that is godly before their God for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. Now, the Jews often refer to people that were not Jews as being the dead. And he's referring to them in that sense here. He says, The gospel was preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. So the gospel was preached to those that were outside of the twelve tribes, the Gentiles, and it was preached to them so that there might be a change of life, so that they might turn from living in the flesh to living in the spirit. Now those that turn to living in the spirit, we might call them Christians. They might not in those early days have called themselves Christians, they might have called themselves God-fearing Jews or righteous Jews. <clears throat> he says the end of all things is at hand, so therefore be sober and watch unto prayer. They thought that the coming of the Lord in glory was about to occur at any time. Um, of course there still was going to be the tribulation to live through, but they may not have understood all that. Above all things, he says, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So here we are. They're under grace, or some of them are, because... They have received the gift, um, and the gift that they've received is salvation from the Lord. These twelve tribes, some of them, had come to know Christ as their Saviour, and they'd come into the <clears throat> they'd come into the the manifold grace of God or the multifaceted grace of God. Now he says, minister the same to one another. You know, the Christian life is to be lived out. It is a life, I'll tell you what it is from this passage, it's a life of charity 
among one another. It's a life of hospitality among each other. And it's a life of ministry to one another. My password is verse 10, where he says, As every man hath received the gift, so even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the grace of God. <coughs> And so the Christian life is not just going to church and putting your best tie on and making yourself look posh and sitting there all sweet like an angel. No. The Christian life is more practical than that. The Christian life is a life of deeds. It's a life of things that you do. It's a life of attitude that you have. It is a life of fervent charity one to another. I love that. It is a life of soberness and of watching unto prayer and it is a life of hospitality to one another and ministry to one another we are to serve one another in the Lord what a great glorious privilege it is to know the Lord and to serve him like this and to serve one another well God bless you that's a bit to think about for the day look forward to speaking to you tomorrow and have a great day. God bless you. Bye for now.